there. I like to play in standard tuning with slide. Um, I love playing in G and E and D and all the other tunings. Um, but when I have to just pick up a guitar in the middle of a session or in the middle of a gig and um, I have to, I want to play slide or I have to play slide, it's just a lot easier. Uh, when you have a tremolo, you know, a, a, a whammy bar or a tremolo bar, uh, it's really difficult to tune. Uh, to tune like to open G because everything goes out of whack. It's going to take you a minute or two um, and you don't usually have time for that in a live situation um, or even in a studio situation. Also, it's easier for me to read. So if I've got to read music uh, like notation music uh, for, for a session or whatever and I, I want to play slide on that, um, it's easier for me to read if I'm in just standard tuning because I'm just, I'm just reading everything. So every, the great thing about standard tuning is that everything you know on the guitar translates to your slide. So all the melodies, all the licks, potentially with some new skill sets, could be played with a slide. Um, and obviously there's th things that, you know, double. You can't really do. Can, with some muting, you can kind of you know imitate some of that stuff. But any line you have, you can actually play with slide. So the now I want to give you a couple tricks. Um, so the main trick is really um, to go on the hunt on your fretboard for um, straight chords. Okay, chords that go across your fretboard perfectly straight, okay, all on the same fret, and you'll be able to make a lot of a lot of chord shapes that way, and I'm going to show you some, I'm going to zoom in now, and I'm going to show you some of those chord shapes, and um, you'll be surprised. Actually, there's some advantages to um, standard tuning over G or E or D, okay? Check this out. This is where I go into my golf announcer voice. Actually, no, but I will talk quieter. Um, so, you know, if you remember, we've talked about the caged method, the, the caged method, which is the um, soloing and scales based on the open chords that you know, C, A, G, E, and D, that spells caged. Um, a couple of them, G and A, and even E, affords us some, some two and three note chords that are on the same fret. The most notable would be A, so when you play an A chord, you've got all three fingers lined up right here, okay? And that would be an A chord there. Or in this case, here's your D chord at the seventh fret. There's the C chord. And there's the G chord at the twelfth fret, or open. Again, I'm muting with my right hand. I'm muting the strings that I'm not using. Uh, so if I'm, I'm, you know, kind of getting my thumb here on the bottom two strings, and I'm getting the, you know, thumb also on the fifth, or fourth string, and then the top three fingers on the top three strings. So there's a major chord. And then with that major chord, we have the, on the fourth string, we have the fifth, we have the root, and we have the third. And so if we were to go below both of those, the fifth, we'd have the fourth, which is always nice to get to the root. Four, five, root. We have the flatted seventh underneath the root on the third string. And we can go there to the third. Or we can take the second, here's the third, on the second string we have the third note, and you go to below the third of the chord we get the second. Isn't that nice? All of that's right around this triad right here that's based on the A shape, or you can think of it as also being based on the G shape. Okay? So you can envision the G shape up here. Boop, boop, boop. And then above it, we have the six. On the bottom string, we have five, six, one. And you can practice that. And then you have the, uh, on the, you have the root here on the second string, or third string again. We go to the second. 
And then we have the uh, third, and then the fourth is a, just a half step above the third. So there's so much to do right around that, that triad that you would do anyway if you were tuned to open G, because the open G would have that same exact note, so it would be the same. The only thing is you would have, on top you would have a fifth, instead here you have a sixth. Okay? But the great thing about that sixth, now remember we're on a D chord here. The great thing about that sixth, if we take the top three strings, sorry, that's a B minor chord. You can't do a minor chord when you tune to a major, an open uh, tuning that's a major key. Or a major chord, sorry. So we have B minor here. So if I want to go one, six, four, I can get this I can get the sixth chord okay so that whatever note this is that's what minor chord this is so in this case this is a B this is B minor here's C minor here's D minor here's E minor so you again you have minor chords all up and down the neck so that's great now another thing you notice is the the standard E form bar chord the E shape okay the top two notes there are on the same fret, and the fourth and fifth string are also the same fret, and they're both the fifth and the root. So if I was in G, so if I was playing a G chord, you can see here's the fifth and here's the root, here's the fifth and here's the root, okay? So if I put my slide on, so if in, in D it would be... Same as what's down here. So you have that five, four, five, one landing spot all over the fretboard. Okay, and so from here you can get to the second or the flat seventh. I like to do that. Okay, now on the bottom here, you got the on the again on the E form, you have the fifth and the root. You got the fourth right here, so that's nice. It's the same as this, but it's all in a plane here. So you could play those three notes at the twelfth fret, and then resolve them here. Kind of cool, um, and then and then also if we envision the A form all the way up here, we're, we're playing on the D here. We also have this root here, and the fifth below that is there, and we got the seventh. So that's another plane where you got two notes that you can play that are right in a row. So. One thing I like to do is just play, you know, you can play a scale. I like, you can harmonize it. It's not gonna be all thirds. The thirds would be difficult because there's no minor third anywhere on here to, to, to play. So in place of minor thirds, um, we're gonna use some fourths. So I'm playing uh, the seventh and seventh on the middle two strings, ninth and ninth. Then I'm playing seventh and seventh on the second and third string. Then I'm gonna jump up to 12-12 on the uh, middle two strings. Go up two frets to 14-14. 12-12 on the second and third string. 14-14. And then top two strings, 10-10.
So it sounds like this. the most perfect harmonization. Uh, like I said, I would prefer to use some thirds in there, minor thirds in there if I could, but that's difficult with a, with a obviously with a slide. So um, anyway, you, and you can take some like melodies, you know, and start practicing them. Try to make them pretty, kind of make them bluesy. So there you go, some tips for playing in uh, standard tuning with a slide. And uh, I may do a follow-up video to this, I'm sure I forgot some things, but these are just to kind of get you started. Um, one of the main things I think you should do is just try to play some simple melodies um, that you have in your head on the guitar and try to get your pitch good and, and get some vibrato happening and get your right hand technique. Remember, the right hand technique is really kind of the hardest part about playing slide. For me, it's muting the strings. Now, you can play with a pick, um, and play slide. I still will be doing muting if I'm going to do that. Um, and uh, if I were in open tuning, then um, I might be more likely to play um, uh, more strings, just kind of let things get messy. Um, like if I were playing a lap steel, which this is tuned uh, open tuning. one's kind of in tune but it's in open G and uh, gives makes a completely different kind of lesson <laughs> so, and I do have lessons I do have videos up on on my lap steel very old ones with different hair and glasses and different location and all that stuff I uh, hope you're doing well God bless you all and thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want notifications um, I'm sorry I try not to post a lot of videos on the same day or even in uh, two days in a row so you don't get a million notifications. Um, I really try to space them out and uh, I hope you're doing well and please do co make comments. Uh, let me know what you want me to do videos on in the future because I'm always looking for ideas and some of my best ideas come from you. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye. What? Mm -hmm.